Some of the best traders in the world always have a draw on liquidity, as it is one of the most important things when it comes to trading. But how do you know where to find it? Well, I've come across a genius draw on liquidity, which works almost every time, which all of you guys can easily use and add to your own trading strategy. So let's get into the video. Now to really simplify this draw on liquidity, I have to split it up into two steps, starting with this first step. So on a daily basis, the market moves through four significant sessions. And in these sessions, that's where we see most volatility released into the market, meaning price is going to move a lot. And all this is called kill zones, which I will show you how to identify in just a minute. Now these kill zones are going to play a huge part in the draw on liquidity, because in each session, price makes a high and a low, which we will use as a draw on liquidity. And this is the simplest version of our draw on liquidity, but there's a much better way to use session highs and lows. But that I will first explain in the second step. So now how do this look in a chart example? Well, you can see right here that we have London highs and London lows, or session highs and session lows. And these session highs and lows should be considered as a significant draw on liquidity, and we would want to see price return to these session highs and lows. Now we can already see after the London session finished, price reached up, swept the London highs, and we are not even within the New York AM kill zone. So let's just see what would happen. We can see right here in the start of the New York AM kill zone, price reached up, swept this high, and now we are starting to move lower. And we could see the London lows being a target as we have swept buy side liquidity. So we could see this high as a high resistance liquidity until we reach a significant level where reversal is anticipated, such as the session lows. So in simple terms, the session lows should become a drawn liquidity as we have already reached the session highs. And we can see right here, price have reached the session lows. So now where is the drawn liquidity? Well, the drawn liquidity then becomes this high up here. And there's several reasons for this, but I will get into that later. So let's just see if price wants to reach the New York AM high. And we can see right here that price reached the New York AM high. This second step can become a game changer to your trading if you use it correctly. So we have talked about how session highs and lows can be used as an important draw on liquidity. But there's one thing we're missing. Now we already know that there's four significant sessions in one day. And each session creates a high and a low. But sometimes these session highs and lows may come very close to each other, but it fails to reach one another. So basically, price is creating equal session highs. And if you have watched my previous video on everything about drawn liquidity, you would know that equal highs is a very strong drawn liquidity in itself. But if you combine this with session highs and lows, it is going to become extremely powerful. And it's a bit difficult to identify on the charts. But before we get into that, there's one more drawn liquidity that I want to talk about. So some of you guys may be familiar with high impact news. And if you're not, you can find them in on forexfactory.com. And these time peg news occur at 8.30. But when they occur, we sometimes see price creates a high at 8.30, which is called a data high. And these data highs, price also tend to return back to. So that is just something that I thought you guys should know before we get into the equal highs chart example. Now the chart example look like this. So we can see that we have the AM highs right here, and then we have the London highs. And the New York AM high failed to reach the London high, creating these equal session highs. And this is a very significant draw on liquidity, as we talked about before. So we could expect price to at least reach these highs within the next day or so. And we can see right here, within the next New York AM kill zone, price reached these two highs. But how do we find these kill zones? Well, we can use what is called a indicator. And if you go up here and type in ICT kill zones plus pivot TFO, you can then use this indicator right here. And that will show you the session highs and lows. But there's some specific settings that we have to adjust. So first of all, you should adjust New York AM to 8.30 till 11 AM, and that is mostly it. And I don't really use the New York lunch, and the New York PM should be set to 13.30 till 1600. 
Now, I do really mean that these session highs and lows always get reached depending on if we are bearish or bullish. So, for example, you can see right here that right now we are bullish, and that means every session high is getting target. You can see right here the PM high gets reached, the Asian high, and then the London high, New York, PM, and it just continues. And right now here we can see we are bearish, then the lows get targeted, and right here we leave down a London low. Price reached this high, and now the low. PM high, and then the low again. And that just continues. You can even see all the way over here, we have some low resistance liquidity, which was made in each session. And these lows get targeted even two days after, as we can see. I just want to talk a bit about the first example, because I said that there was a reason the price reached this New York AM high. And that's because it is a data high, as we also talked about just before. As you can see, at 8.30, price creates a low and a high. And this high remains as the New York AM high, creating a data high. And this data high is a significant drawn liquidity, as it is both a session high and a drawn liquidity in itself. So we could see immediately after we finished the New York AM session, price started to reach this data high. And we also see this data high sometimes be one of the equal session highs. Thank you so much for watching, guys. But did you know there's also a specific strategy which you can use with the ICT kill zones? Well, you can watch my video about it right here.